Hey, what's going on everyone, Greg here. And one thing that really stuck out to me at Apple's WWDC event this year was how heavily they leaned into gaming, particularly with this new M2 chip. And Apple even showed off one of my favorite video game franchises ever on the world stage at WWDC. It was crazy for me to see Resident Evil and Apple on the same stage. And Resident Evil 8 is apparently in development for Apple Silicon to run natively uh, using custom APIs with Metal 3. And supposedly the performance is going to be good enough when that game comes out later this year to be able to run on 1080p settings um, with the MacBook Air, a thing that probably shouldn't be able to even game. And then it's also going to be running apparently in 4K on like high or like ultra settings using something with a more powerful GPU like the Mac Studio. But either way, it got me really thinking about the potential of Apple actually being a gaming platform. And I really wanted to test this new M2 chip as well, because even though Apple made a lot of claims about performance boost with the M2 chip, the biggest performance boost isn't in things like the CPU with this new chip, it's actually in GPU power, with Apple saying that the M2 chip with its new 10-core GPU should have, at a maximum, 35% faster performance. So for this video, I wanted to test some games on this new M2 MacBook Pro and see, is the Mac finally ready to be able to play some games? Could this possibly be a secret gaming laptop? All right, let's start off this test with a very simple game to run. This runs on basically anything. It even runs on some toasters, League of Legends. Uh, this is a very popular game, so it's obviously one that people always have a lot of questions on, uh, especially when running it on the Mac. Now, I can happily say that on the M2 chip, um, League of Legends is running extremely well. So we have it set to the highest resolution uh, that you can set it to, which is 2560 by 1600. And we have everything set to very high and the frame rates are above, what, 129 frames per second. We're getting 129, 141 uh, as we wait for characters to get on screen. Uh, then we can actually see if we get more frame dips, but as long as it's above 60 frames per second on this 60 Hertz display, we really shouldn't have a problem. And because we are already seeing such high frame rates on League of Legends, uh, it doesn't look like we're running into any issues here. So uh, on this M2 MacBook Pro, League of Legends is running really well. Let's try and look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a very popular game that always pops up in uh, game benchmarks for Mac platforms. It has a inbuilt benchmarking tool. So let's go ahead and run that benchmark on the M2 MacBook Pro. Now, uh, I did do a benchmark the other day where I compared it against the 14-inch uh, M1 Max MacBook Pro to compare the different graphic settings on the highest settings that this game had at 1080p. And this game got about 29 frames per second on average. Uh, I usually like to hit at least 30 FPS on average, a stable 30 FPS to play a game. If you can get to 60 FPS, that's even better. So we're going to run this test at 1440 by 900. And we're also going to put the graphics down to the medium settings so we can see how well this does in a synthetic benchmark of running Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All right, uh, well, I thought this would actually turn out to be a little bit better. Now, I am seeing that stable-ish 30 frames per second that I wanted to see, but I had higher hopes. I thought by lowering the resolution and by uh, putting this on medium graphic settings that we might have been able to see frame rates that were approaching maybe 45, maybe 60 frames per second, and we're just not seeing that here. Again, this is running through Rosetta 2 uh, emulation, not emulation really, it's a translation layer translating that code, and that is taking quite a performance hit on the M2 chip itself, and I think that's going to be something I say a lot throughout this video. All right, as we end this benchmark, we can see that we're getting an average FPS of 34 frames per second. Again, that's basically what I said what I wanted to see, uh, 30 FPS or higher, when running this benchmark. And we're seeing that. I was just a little disappointed uh, that it wasn't higher. So let's go ahead and test out another game now. Uh, let's go ahead and look at something else at Steam. You know what, let's go ahead and try Counter-Strike uh, Go. Now there's always something that goes wrong when I test games for Mac. I cannot get CSGO to run in full screen mode no matter what settings I pick, but we are playing in high settings in windowed mode. And you can see that the FPS uh, is high over here. We're getting above 60 frames per second. Uh, this MacBook Pro only has a 60 Hertz uh, refresh rate on the monitor. So we are getting more than enough FPS to play this game even on high settings. So that's exactly what we wanna see here. Um, I would say there's 
some slight frame drops. The game does still, again, it feels a little bit unoptimized for Mac, but yeah, definitely playable. All right, let's get another round in. Uh, can I buy stuff this time? Look at this, we're gonna get an M4. I'm locked and loaded. I'm playing against bots because I didn't have the confidence to face people while I'm playing and showing everyone in the internet my playing skills on CSGO, which I don't play, and I'm playing with a trackpad and I just got flashbanged by a bot. Oh no, oh no, what's gonna happen? Oh, I'm fine, look at this. And then, and then we're gonna go here. And then, oh, 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 oh. I didn't get killed by a bot. All right, for the next test, we are going to be running Metro Exodus and I'm in the graphic settings and you can already see another problem with Mac OS gaming. Sometimes the customability is so limited and when I go to pick between the resolutions right now, I am only greeted by higher resolution. So I guess we're gonna run this at 2560 by 1600 and we're going to set the quality to I think we're gonna set it to low I don't even think we should attempt a medium on this game so let's go ahead and see how this runs with uh, these graphical settings so this game is running a lot better than I expected it to be when I was running through the settings you can see right now actually we're getting above 60 frames per second although it does dip down a lot as we uh, start going through the game as we start seeing things move around as uh, enemies appear into frame. But uh, yeah, I was definitely not expecting it to run this well. I know it's only on low settings, but this game actually looks pretty good on low settings, uh, especially with the higher resolution. The text and everything is very sharp. The picture is very sharp. And uh, oh, well, there you can see it dipped to 30 frames per second. So that's, that's why we wanted to have it on low. Uh, as enemies appear on screen, as things get more intense, that frame is gonna drop, but at least we are hitting frame rates, it looks like pretty constantly above 30 frames per second. Uh, so it looks like Metro Exodus is totally playable on the M2 chip on this 10 core GPU on the MacBook Pro. Now, another game I really like is Civilization VI, and this also has a graphics benchmark built in. Uh, we're going to be doing another benchmark, 1440 by 900, uh, using medium settings. So here I am really thrilled to see this because uh, on medium settings right now, as we run through this benchmark, we are seeing pretty locked in at 60 frames per second or even going above 60 frames per second uh, on medium settings. So that is something I am really happy with. Of course, we're not gonna go through a full game of Civilization VI to show you this because uh, then I would be stuck playing this for like the next 24 hours and this video would not get done. Another popular free to play game is Fortnite. Uh, I am horrible at this game. I, I really don't get it but it's a very popular game that people always want tested. And hey, they took it off the iPhones, but they can't take it off the Mac. Well, I guess they could take it off the Mac, but Epic has their own store on the Mac, so they probably wouldn't want to. But uh, so for the Fortnite settings, I put it on uh, 1440 by 900 again. Uh, this time we're gonna run it at high and set that to, yeah, everything looks good. So let's go into a round of Fortnite. Let's see if I can actually kill someone. Not actually kill them let's see if i can eliminate someone you know it, it sounds wrong it sounds wrong but we're gonna we're gonna try our best here uh do i want to play squads i think i want to play solo because i am really bad at fortnite and i don't want to drag anyone else down with me so i'm going in solo han solo i didn't like that movie all right and we are dropping in uh as we are dropping in i can see that the frame rate is above 60 frames per second it seems to not be dipping below that which is good news to start off with. Uh, like I said, we are gonna try our best not to completely embarrass ourselves off the start of this Fortnite match, but I can't promise you that. I can't promise you that. I think, I think it's gonna be pretty embarrassing, especially again, I am playing with a trackpad. So, uh, you know, uh, you know that's, that's my own fault. A fishing rod? No, that's, uh, that's not what we need. This, this looks a little bit better. But before I get eliminated, I just want to say that the frame rate is stable. Uh, we're getting above 60 frames per second, uh, and it seems pretty rock solid. I don't know, something about the M2 chip, uh, the way it's handling these frame rates for Mac games that are usually pretty unoptimized. I remember Fortnite on older systems being very unoptimized for Mac OS. I'm thinking back to the Intel days when I used to do these benchmarks, and the frame drops would be much more severe. Um, this is looking pretty good. Oh no, can I do it? Can I do it? Can 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 Greg uh, can Greg actually do it? Is someone worse than me? Oh no, I'm out of ammo. What do we do? No! Well, Renegade 53, uh, 
you proved people right that uh, I'm not good at Fortnite. But hey, at least we tested the game and we can see it runs on high settings on Mac OS and we're getting above 60 frames per second, which is exactly what we want to see in a competitive game, uh, especially when we're limited to this 60 hertz display. So Fortnite runs on the M2 chip. This is going a lot better than I expected so far. Well, it's Fortnite. I probably shouldn't be that impressed. All right, let's end this test with one of my favorite games, StarCraft II. Uh, I love using StarCraft II as a benchmark for Mac games because it actually includes the render API for Metal, uh, which should give us the best uh, performance graphics-wise, especially on Apple Silicon. Um, but again, we do always run into problems whenever I use a new system. And again, I am just limited to resolution of 2560 by 1600. I've actually never had this happen to me, I believe, in StarCraft before. Uh, but we're gonna go with it anyway. And it's recommending the high setting, so I'm going to play it on high as well. And we'll see how well that does. But yeah, StarCraft II, I, I love this game. Uh, this is definitely for the old people out there. All the young people already clicked off this video by now. Once once they got past Fortnite, they were done watching this video. So, uh, but it's fine. We don't need them. We're going to continue on here and we're going to get the performance metrics for StarCraft 2. So let's go ahead and load up. Um, let's go into like a campaign mission so we can kind of gauge performance. All right, so I load it into a campaign mission here and this benchmarking test has been full of surprises so far. I thought StarCraft 2 was actually going to run pretty well on this machine and uh, just the settings we picked it at, maybe the resolution's just too high. Um, it's not good. I'm getting way below 30 frames per second. We're looking at 17 frames per second right now on high settings with the uh, higher resolution. And for StarCraft 2, this is basically, this is unplayable. You cannot play a StarCraft 2 match like this. Uh, if you're playing competitively, you will be destroyed and even just playing through a single player campaign like this, it's just not ideal. Let me see if we drop the settings down, if we can actually salvage this test. Uh, let's pick the lower resolution over here and let's also drop this down to medium. Now, not everything's gonna take effect when we do this probably. Oh, okay. Did StarCraft just crash on me? StarCraft just crashed on me. So uh, I am running into error after error after error trying to get StarCraft 2 to run. Again, I've tested this game on so many different Macs right now. The performance was awful when I tested it on the M2 chip. And for some reason, it just keeps crashing. So this is always the problem we have to go with uh, anytime Apple releases new hardware, uh, even new software at times. And it is so frustrating. Uh, for any sort of gaming situation on the Mac. It is just not good. Like this is the story of Mac right now. Uh, you don't know what to expect anytime you go to play any of these games. Every system handles them differently. Uh, the APIs are a mess. Apple does not have a unified gaming vision, which is why I was so happy when they brought Capcom on stage to show off Resident Evil 8 running on Apple Silicon. They talked all about these APIs and how they were going to start making games uh, built to run on metal, built for Apple Silicon with all of this powerful hardware. But that is going to take years and years and years before we see the fruit of that labor. And right now, Gaming on the Mac is still such a mess. What did we learn today with this M2 MacBook Pro test when it comes to gaming? Uh, is the M2 chip better for gaming? Yes, in some instances it is. Some of the games we were running were pretty competent on the M2 chip. And the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, I am seeing some graphical improvements here, but overall gaming on the Mac, it's something that still needs to be fixed. And I really want to believe Apple. I really want to take them at their word uh, when they say that they are working with developers to bring their games over to Apple Silicon to run on these native APIs. And I'm actually really looking forward to testing out some of those games like Resident Evil 8 when they are actually available to see just how well they actually run. But unless you're doing something like game streaming on the Mac right now, this still isn't something I can recommend for any serious gamer. However, if you are playing some lighter titles like Fortnite, League of Legends, uh, even games like Civilization VI, if you're playing on lower or medium settings, this thing is certainly capable of gaming. It's just you don't know how games are going to run depending on uh, the studio behind it, what kind of engine it's using. And then on top of all that, sometimes your games Maybe they don't even work. Maybe they don't even work like we did with StarCraft 2. And again, that is such a surprise to me 
considering I've tested StarCraft II on so many different Macs and it's always run. And finally, now I test on M2 Mac and we're just running through all sorts of problems. So should you get this 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro for gaming? No, obviously not. Uh, should you get the M2 MacBook Air for gaming? No, but if you wanna play some lighter titles, maybe it's fine. All right, everyone, but that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, please leave me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed. If for some reason you wanna buy the M2 MacBook Pro, well, check out my affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.